after the last video I did, I, I realized I never really took a good look at the controller or inside the controller. So I decided to come out here today and do that. Now it's got an aluminum housing that goes over the top. And you can see, see there is some mud that did get a little bit in there. Uh, that's the part that covers right here. You can see the rubber piece that slides into this groove. The controller itself looks, it looks really well. Um, it's sealed in there. The circuit board is, is like sealed over. Now there is some, looks like a grounding, maybe grounding. Somebody can tell me that, all these screw heads here. But all in all, it looks pretty good. Now, I did get a little concerned, you know, because it, it does have some opportunity in there for water to, to create havoc, so. I noticed there wasn't any, any kind of seal or anything around the sides. Plus, you know, with this end right here being removable, it's just a, little rubber piece with grooves in it just slides into that spot so that to me is another opportunity for water to get in there so what I decided I'm going to try to do is I'm going to take this this clear silicone and I'm going to try to seal around the edges all the way around and maybe around this rubber grommet side just for any future mud rides that I do, which will be coming up to, to make sure I don't have any issues. Now, I was thinking about it, you know, that might make it harder to take this apart in the future, but if I'm taking it apart in the future, it's probably because I have an issue. So cutting a little silicone off and, and breaking that loose won't be the major problems if I'm taking this thing back apart. So uh, there is four screws that go in the back if you ever pull it off there. There are these four Phillips head screws. So I may seal around those also. All right, so I got her back together. Um, it's not the prettiest job on the sealant. You just wanna make sure that these rubber pieces go back in like they're supposed to. So now I'm gonna let it dry and I'm gonna remount it to the bike. So we'll see how well that helps in the future. All right, so as I dug a little further, uh, I was looking at where the battery is housed or the holder, and I could see some, some mud and things up in the grooves and stuff. So I wanted to take a look at that and then look at, you know, how this connector where the battery connects looks. So, you know, I pulled this part off. There's just two screws that goes here and then took all the, the mounting screws off of this. And this snaps right off so you know you can see there's still I cleaned it up a little bit but you can still see where there's some mud in there so I wanted to look one I was looking at this hole where the battery wire runs through there's no grommet or anything on there so I'm gonna look at trying to do something there but what I really found interesting is I as I took this part apart is how they sealed the two uh, power cables so you can see there's some exposure there still. So I want to seal these up because if any water gets trapped between the two, it could short out, I would think. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and then I'm gonna put some sealant around those two lugs. You know, you can see where they made an effort in the factory to do it. So I'm gonna try to make a little bit better effort. Well, you can see I just slammed her on there as best I could. Looked for any gaps. Just tried to fill it all in. So now I'm gonna let this dry for a while before I try to put everything back together. I sealed the controller. Try to get a good view of it here. I'm sorry about the lighting. So you can see I sealed all around it. Sealed where the cables come through underneath I don't know if you can see this or not where the battery lugs are up in there you can see the sealant I put in to try to keep the water out of all those components 
one of the things I did do after the mud ride is I actually just put them on a few minutes ago is I got these new little fancy fenders. Not real expensive. I think they were $19 on Amazon. I can post a link if you'd like. Got them in red to try to kind of match the brakes. Look pretty good. One of the things I mentioned I wanted to do another video was doing some quick change racks. Uh, when I'm just doing normal riding, just riding around the house or just trying to have fun, uh, I just use the Himalaya rack because I'm not, I'm not carrying anything, you know, nothing big. Uh, but when I do go hunting, I want to I have the opportunity to, to either, you know, put my tree stand on there. Uh, you may have seen in the other video where I had the, the game cart attachment. Uh, it's a little muddy from still being on the ride, but this... This is the uh, attachment that I use to put my tree stand on and it holds all the parts for the game cart. And I made that quick change. Uh, as in the other video, when, when this turns into the game cart, then I mount, I mount my caster piece on here and that becomes my swivel for the game cart. So this would attach like this and it would be my game cart with my hitch. So when I don't need that, and I'm just going to, you know, I could either just carry my tree stand in with my bow or just my bow on my backpack. I wanted more surface, obviously, than this, and I wanted a quick change because I don't, I don't want to keep it on the bike because when I put it on my rack for my truck, you know, it hangs out so far. It's outside the, the sides of my truck. So I wanted a quick change. So... I came up with a rack. This is a this is an old tree stand platform. It's aluminum, and all I did is I made the same bracket that you will see on on the game cart attachment and on the on the caster. Uh, this square piece here that fits perfectly on the width of that rack. These are five sixteenths knobs. You can get them anywhere. I got them at Lowe's, I believe. Um, so this just slides on. I put some carpet. So uh, you might have seen the indoor outdoor carpet on the bottom just to keep any rattling. You know, try to keep it from scratching the the Hemway rack up too much. Just pop it on there. Tighten down these knobs. You want to get them good and good and tight. And this thing is ready to roll. Now I got green bungees on there. I'm actually gonna try to change them to red. I gotta go get some yeah, to match the fenders and brakes. You know, I know that sounds cheesy, but I think it'd look pretty cool. Now, as far as strength goes, I mean, this thing, it's solid. You can see it is solid on that bike. Not bouncing, you know, it doesn't make a rattle. It doesn't do anything crazy. Uh, you can bungee some big stuff on there. I got this, uh, this Craftsman toolbox. It's a little plastic one. Get sit down there and bungee her down. I know it's empty, but it's good for hauling stuff. When you're done, you don't want it. You can just take the quick screws back up, put this where you want to go, and you're back with just your normal Himalaya rack. So, got any questions on how to build it, uh, if you need some ideas or some help, you know, let me know. I'll show you, basically these, these 5 16 bolts are just where your normal screws came through, the wood piece for the Himalaya rack, and I just double nutted them so they wouldn't come loose well here on doesn't look the greatest but I'll show you just poke up a little bit and they're just hex bolts on the bottom and these are actually nylon nuts stand so another addition I put on the bike is this Bent piece of aluminum right here. 
being a welder, I got scrap all over the place, so I just happened to have this piece of aluminum, and it was bent already, perfect L shape, so I decided to make use of it. So now being, I'm from Georgia, and you know, we're all gun carrying rednecks. Now I have my portable handgun holster. And basically it's just, uh, the holster itself is just a retention holster. Uh, outside the pants as they call it it sits on your hip and I just got it to where it mounts to the bracket and it just holds it so you can pull and it, it stays there if I want to take the holster off it's just you know you can see I have a bolt back there to keep it from sliding the retention part of itself is just holding on the piece so I hope uh, you got some information out of this video and I uh, appreciate you watching. If you're in uh, North Georgia area, north of Atlanta, and you'd like to test ride to Hemaway, uh, drop me an email and uh, we can try to get together and I'll let you check it out. If you're in upstate New York, uh, my brother up there has, has the same bike. He hasn't rednecked it out as much as I have, but He's willing to, you know, let some people come look at it and, and check it out. So, all right. Thank you.